Craft here with Motion VFX, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at the Pointers Expansion Pack for M Tracker 3D. We're going to use just three of many of the pointers that are included with this expansion pack. So here we are inside of Final Cut, and if we go to our Titles and Generators sidebar, M Tracker 3D Expansions, scroll down through these, and you're going to see that we have a Pointers Pack. Numerous pointers, indicators, flags, hands, hearts, etc. Each one of these pointers and indicators have an animate in and an animate out to add a quick effect to your track footage. We'll add some of these right here in a moment. Back in the library, we do have a pointers tutorial project. I want you to notice that this is 24 frames per second. And then I have this pointers pack clip that is also 24 frames per second. Make sure the frame rate is the same for both your project and your footage. That is important for M-Tracker 3D. So for our pointers tutorial project, I'm going to drag this footage onto the timeline. And over in our effects browser, let's go ahead and immediately drag this M Tracker 3D onto this footage. Now two places that we can track it, we can track it here, or in our titles inspector, M Tracker 3D, we can track here as well. Same result either way. Now this clip is about 12 and a half seconds and it takes about four minutes for it to track on my 2018 MacBook Pro. Once your track is finished, let's go ahead and copy that. Let's head back to that pointers pack in our titles and generator sidebar. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag three of these pointers directly above my footage. So with all three of these pointers or indicators, I have retimed them to where I want them to essentially animate in and animate out all at different times. And I don't need to see all three of these at one time. So I'm just gonna come in here and hide the heart, pressing V on the keyboard. Same thing with the flag. Let's focus on comment one. With it selected, since we've already copied the track from N Tracker 3D, we head over to the title inspector, we can paste that track. We got the confirmation that the tracking data was saved successfully. And with the target icon, let's go ahead and put the 3D gizmo right about here. We want to put it onto a steel object and I'm assuming that's a trash can right there. I'm gonna give this a quick scrub to see if it stays put. We have a good track. One important thing to note here, if you do retime or reposition this pointer, it is highly recommended that you repaste that track and then find a new location using the blue target to position that 3D gizmo at a different point in your footage. So with this model that we have here with the drop zone, a couple of things we can do to adjust this. What I want you to notice right now is that it appears to be really bright because it's relatively small. If we increase the content scale, we will lose some of that light, but we can fix that with our light settings. So content scale, we're gonna raise that up. Notice it did get a little bit darker, no big deal. Let's just make a few adjustments to this. Let's change our model color. Now checking these two options here, oscillate, you can make it bounce up and down. Checking on model revolve, it will revolve the model a certain number of degrees that you set here. But again, just a few quick adjustments that we're gonna make. Let's look at the light and the shadows. I'm gonna knock this opacity up just to see where the shadows are. Paying attention to the shadows of the people. These are really long shadows, which tells me that the sun is just over the horizon. So maybe it's just morning or the sun's about to set. We can stretch these shadows out by adjusting the light angle. Let's also rotate the sun some to make these shadows match. Knock that opacity down. We can still see the shadows here and you can keep those if you'd like. And let's soften those up a bit. Maybe change the color with the color picker. I'm gonna pick a darker part of this asphalt. We can see the shadows change. Let's darken those up just a hair. And with adjustments like this, we can get that subtle shadow from the model and text onto our footage. Let's fix this drop zone. Back in the library, I have this picture. Heading back to my pointer, scrolling down to the drop zone, let's drag that picture in there. Back to the footage and model again. We have our drop zone. I'm going to adjust that scale a little bit. Let's also change our text. And obviously you have fonts, colors, tracking, all sorts of options you can do there. And instead of me using the model revolve that I mentioned earlier, maybe I just wanna rotate this content just a little bit. The green axis, we wanna rotate it around the Y axis. That looks pretty good. Just doing a quick check. And that model stays put. It's a very nice track. Skipping ahead to the end, let's see it animate out. Not bad. We're gonna come in here and repeat this process for the flag. Press and V on the keyboard to hide that temporarily. Flag two, I'm gonna show it. We still have that data copied so we can paste the track. Clicking okay. Let's throw the flag right over here. Checking out the track. 
rock solid. And I'm gonna make some adjustments just like I did with the first model. I'm gonna bring back in this other model. And why not, let's go for a parallel look. And one more time for the heart. Making a few adjustments. And with those three models, three different indicators, three solid tracks, very subtle shadows and three pieces animating in separately. And I think this is done. Let's have one more look at that final effect. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials on M-Tracker 3D and other plugins for Motion and Final Cut, make sure to go ahead and subscribe. And again, my name is B-Craft. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.